So welcome back to the shop, friends. Today I'm gonna to show you a simple but effective way to sharpen any sort of shear or scissor. I think a lot of guys are, are somewhat intimidated by the idea of trying to sharpen scissors or shears, you know, thinking that you might need some real specialty tools or specialty jigs, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Now, with that said, if you're talking about super high-end shears for, for uh, stylists, hair stylists, or dressmakers or stuff, yes, of course, they have some, some of those shears, you, you, then they are expensive, especially haircutting shears. Just go ask your wife if she cuts hair professionally, how much, <laughs> how much she spent on them, and they're very unlikely to, to let you on the kitchen table sharpen them. I'm talking about general purpose stuff, you know, for the shop and, and garden and, and home and the junk drawer type of thing. Not that they, we can't get an excellent edge on here, and, and actually, in some cases, better than a factory one, uh, but just know that. Don't be grabbing, uh, don't be grabbing her, uh, her professional shears. So, you know, the thing about shears is, is, look, man, look how far we've fallen. Here is what is commercially available that we're going to, you know, most of us are going to buy if we're not looking at real specialty stuff is something like this from Fiskars. And you may have seen, I mean, I grew up, my grandmother was a seam, seamstress and a very talented dressmaker. And she always had the really nice uh, Fiskars. And I remember that, you know, th threatening our lives, you know, she ever caught us touching her sewing scissors. And, and so I, you know, I always have, when I see that, I think, oh, those are good quality. Not, these are not so much <laughs> anymore. I don't know where they're made if they're still made in Finland or uh, who knows where but they're they're not great uh, look at the build and look at the look how thin the rivets are and and they're just kind of phony and you know we've seen these here you know the Fiskars are not too far off from these these are probably you're going to be your classic Walmart style of scissors very thin uh, essentially throwaway garbage scissors compared with scissors of the old days here look at these all cast uh, what are these these stainless steel I mean very very nice these scissors here uh, were designed uh, to last a hundred years, multiple lifetimes to be able to tighten them. You can see they've got a screw there if they get a little bit loose with a nut, totally serviceable, good quality, good quality steel, as well as these big guys. These here belong to my, I believe, these belong to my, uh, my, my or they definitely belong to my dad, but I think he got them from his, <laughs> from his dad. So they've probably been on my family for three generations, and these are the ones I keep out in the shop for cutting canvas and leather and heavy things. But again, a lifetime scissor that you can sharpen and maintain. So when I'm talking about scissors, I'm gonna disregard these guys and go with something like this. These can be had, I mean, I'm serious, you can find these things at garb or garbage stores, junk <laughs> garage sales or, or flea, mo flea <laughs> flea markets, wherever, St. Vincent de Paul, thrift stores, anything like that, they're usually going to be 25 cents, 50 cents on it because someone got rid of them because they didn't cut anymore because they didn't know how to sharpen them. And we can sharpen them so easy. You don't need anything special. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get started. I'll show you the process uh, and how you can do this yourself and get a get excellent results. So where do we start? Well, where we start, what we have here, I mean, this is just basically like a knife or a chisel edge. It's going to just be sharp. It's going to be flat on one side and it's going to have a chisel edge on the other side, usually about 10 degrees or so. It's, it's pretty pretty shallow or pretty steep there. Uh, so, and on the inside here is, is they're typically also going to be a hollow ground, meaning they're kind of ground like this, kind of con concave. We don't need to worry about that. The only thing we need to worry about is getting a flat surface on here and, you know, of course, knocking off the rust. So there's many ways that we can do that. If you have a, um, a sharpening stone, uh, I'm just going to use a diamond plate here. Don't worry if you don't have a diamond plate. Uh, but all you're going to do is, is you're going to hold that flat against there and open them. Just put it in your vise, and we're just going to clean. We're just going to flatten that up, pushing toward you know pushing some pressure on there, not too much. And then we're going to look and see. We don't need to go crazy too far. But what we're looking for is we're looking for fresh metal all the way across there. And you can see right there where it's flattened that out. And I've got a little, you can just see a little glimmer all the way across there. That's all, that's all we need. You don't need any more than that. Now you say, well, I don't have a fancy diamond stone. Well, you should have one of these, right? How long have I been promoting these guys? The, the wonderful Lansky stone that you can, it's, it's a pretty much a do-all stone. You can do everything with it. And same thing, you know, you put a little water on there, a kerosene, anything like that that will help carry the chips away we can do that too. So we'll just hold that there and, and flat, and we'll do the same thing. So I'll, 
I'll sharpen one side with a Lansky stone. We'll do the whole job here, and then we'll do the other one with, with some of the, maybe you have a, a, a little bit better assortment of tools, but again, the same thing right there. If you don't have a Lansky stone, it's probably about the best six, seven dollars you'll ever spend. It's just a must have right there. That doesn't take very long, does it? Okay, so again, we're looking at that, and we have, we do indeed have a nice glimmer all the way across there, and we're ready to, uh, ready to file the angle on it. The best way I've found to do this is to take your scissors and clamp them in your vise. If you have a woodworking vise, you can clamp them right in there. If you have a machine vise or metal vise, just make sure you have some soft jaws so you don't mar, mar, the, uh, mar the edge. So, so put your scissors in here, and of course we've got the flat side away from us. I prefer, if you're going to have a pair of scissors that are pretty rough and bad shape, if you look at them and they've got some burrs or nicks on them, get yourself a small file, a, a, fall, a fine file, a saw filer's file uh, works very good. And we're going to start at the back and you can see that this is all rusty with the power of the electron microscope here. We can get in nice and close. Um, and we can see that's rusty and we're going to start here and we're going to pull back. Now you're going to, want, you're going to just ask me, you know, what, well, how do you maintain the angle? Well, the angle is probably correct on there, and you're just going to follow it. So you're going you're gonna to see as you pull, as you're cleaning that rust away, right? You can do that. Now, if you have, you have a scissors that are in pretty good shape, or you're just resharpening something that you've already done, a small stone works really good. And of course, we'll use the Lansky stone on the other side, but if you have the means to get these little guys, you can get these on Amazon. Um, or lots of different places. They're really nice. They're very, very controllable. And we can, uh, we can just go and we can, this is a thousand grit here. We can just go and we're just polishing and we're just looking at that. We're looking at that rust. These here I can see, and maybe you can see too, have probably never been sharpened, not by hand anyway, because I can see that flat stone is revealing the machine marks. It was probably sharpened on a grinder uh, or something like that, which is fine, but you know, you can do better with it, especially with a fine stone like that. So, you know, what grit should you use? Well, whatever you have, you know, if you, if you have a thousand grit and you, in a little bit of time, I can see here that this is not going to get it done because those machine marks are so deep. If I run into something like that, I'm going to use a, a coarser stone. So here's one that's, that's more coarse. You know, we can work that to take that, whoops, Goodness, I'll cut my finger off to cut that. Uh... Yeah, look at those machine marks. Can you see those? You see the, the ridges sticking up there? That's interesting. Did I cut my finger? No, I didn't. luckily, I'm going to be more careful. That looks better. Okay, so now we've got the machine marks out of it. You can see that, right? Hopefully you can see that. Now, if we want to, if you really want to want to geek out on this and, and get it nice, you can go with a finer stone and... Uh, and put a polish on it. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Now, once you sharpen these once, if you stay up, stay on top of them, all you're going to have to do is just take that fine stone and just run it right across there, right? Like that. That's it. Now again, nothing fancy needed. Remember on your Lansky stone, you've got a coarse and you've got a fine side. So we knew that we, we know that we had some pretty good machine marks in there, right? So we're just gonna go here. And it's a it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit bulkier and harder to work with, but go back and forth until you see, until you see you've got the angle. Now don't touch it, <laughs> don't touch back over there because you're gonna mess up what you've already done. And it is gonna be hard to get to the very back of it, but that's not so important for our, just our utility scissors. That stone is quickly taking that that edge down. Just keep watching, maintain that angle. Now, do we have all that machining out? Yep, we do. Now, take your Lansky and spray some water on there and use your flip over to the fine side, and we'll put a little polish on that. You can just see how much smoother that is, or I can see it. Now, you obviously, you, the, the advantage of the a small handheld square stone is, is better in that we can, you know, we can go right up to that point right there and touch that. But um, not necessary for a serviceable, 
the serviceable edge. So we mentioned that wire edge. Remember that wire edge we were on that back side from the sharpening? Now, you, all you have to do is, once you close the scissors, that's going to take care of that wire edge right there, and that, that's all you're going to need. Now, these should be sharp. This is a, just a, a blue shop towel here. These are kind of challenging to cut for some scissors, but it's, uh, it cuts nice. cuts right down right to the tip. It's not folding anything over, and these are very sharp scissors. Now, a couple of maintenance things. Now, sometimes you'll feel these things that are, that are wiggly, that this screw is loose. These don't happen to be. They're tight. I think that they haven't really been used very much. But you don't want to you don't want to tighten that down bear out down on that so it's so tight that it's difficult to um, to close the scissors. If it's a little bit loose, that's fine. What what you're looking for is you want that when the scissors come together right here at this pinch point, that's where you want them to be coming in contact, and you want to feel and hear that the two pieces of metal that are touching like that. That's all you need, right there. But uh, when they're sharpened properly, listen. That a nice sound, very delightful sound. Uh, any other maintenance items? So a couple things. It's not a bad idea to have um, uh, put a little drop of oil on them, you know, because so put a drop of oil, you know, you can in there, you know, here and here, you know, not too much. It's going to get get all over the place. But I'll put a, little, a couple drops of oil there, and I'll work that in there. I can feel the difference right there. I mean, that makes a huge difference. This is my favorite oiler. That little, I got this as an add-on uh, to some gun cleaning stuff, and I have loved this. It's a little, it even has a little cap, but it's got, it's a Hopi's deal for gun oil, and it's got a tiny little needle hole on there, and you can get it everywhere. Everywhere, you just need to put one little tiny drop, and having that, that nice container, I think this oil would probably last you, <laughs> last a guy probably a lifetime or two. These are super, super nice. Okay, so the only other thing that you want to look for is if you have, again, have some that are very worn, is uh, check out the tip. If, if it's not a closing together, right, if this has been worn down or ground down to the point where you can see like a gap, like a gun sight type, type of deal in there, not so with these, this can be fixed right back here. They usually have a little stop on them. It's more pronounced on these guys right here. But you see that little stop right there? Now that can be filed down. You can hit that with a file and it will cause them to overclose. It'll, it'll actually cause them to close more. Uh, so that's just, just so you know. Um, there's other, yeah, that, that's it.